They don't get it. You'll be told that it's there on a, you know, on a depot, but you are limited to two bags. So if you are supposed to have mass production, say you plant one acre, you cannot use two bags of uh, fertilizer to be able to you know, improve your yield or your productivity on your one acre. Mm. So some of the things we are having that government is initiating, yes. But we need to know, if you're saying that we are giving fertilizer at a lower price, how much yield uh, from Transoia, one acre was producing how many bags, and now because we are giving this fertilizer an affordable price, this is how the yield or productivity, uh, productivity has improved. So we are not focusing on the key sectors which are supposed to create jobs and to be able to ensure that uh, ordinary Kenyans have access to money so that they can feel that they have money in the pocket. And I think the other thing which this government and the leadership is keep on saying is that when Kebaki came in, uh, we had people that to repay Ushuru to Jitegeme, so people used to pay taxes. But what the leadership is not telling us, Kibaki never introduced new taxes. Kibaki said, comply. Comply. The reason why people are not paying taxes is because you load us on this tax, you load another one, you load another one, so we are, they are fed up. And every taxpayer is looking on a way of, how can I avoid this tax? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you know, Arnold Maliba and Ghetto President on Facebook is saying the economy will improve when Mamamboga and Boda Boda people, their businesses are stable. What is the way forward? Is there hope? Um, earlier on, we've listened to Prime CS Musali Mudavadi uh, just about last year saying, give the government time. Do we still have time or how much time is left, Arnold, to be able to say, okay, fine, we're at a place where everyone can feel? Whereas, of course, you cannot get a 100%, um, you know, agreement on how things are, but a majority to be able to say and feel fine, we are getting somewhere. First of all, it's important to actually underscore the fact that the bottom-up the, the bottom economic uh, transformation agenda is a proper diagnostics, is a proper diagnosis of where we are as a country. Mm. So we got the diagnosis right. What we are not getting right is the treatment. And you see, you can actually properly diagnose a Where will the doctors come from to treat? So we really need, it's the doctors to actually pull up their socks. And that's what I'm saying. We cannot leave the burden of proper communication to the president alone. Now, he is lucky he has got a deputy now who actually can actually give him a backup. But we still need the heads of MDS, those are ministries, departments, and agencies to actually come out. Sometimes you will be talking about an issue in a certain department, and you never hear anything from the minister, you hear nothing from the PS, you hear nothing from the MD of that particular agency. You could have a problem about water, and you hear nothing about from the chairperson, from, oh, if it's the water towers or anything like that. So ministers, PSs, uh, MDs, and people who are in those particular departments, you cannot then allow the whole department to be, the, the whole government to be shouldering a burden of a simple explanation. I'll tell you, George, mm -hmm. sometimes we come here and have this conversation. Once you go back and seek for the information, you realize that the spins that are out here is simply because somebody has got information and they seated on it. I have been watching parliamentary sessions. You wonder why we took so long debating those issues, having hashtags and people trending about it. When somebody shows up in parliament, having been called before a parliamentary committee, and he has got all the facts, all along they had all that information. We need to actually tell CSS and PSS and heads of agencies to start speaking up. I want to give you an example. When is the last time you had anybody from the board, the Ways of Fund, not the Ways of Fund, the Hassler Fund board talk? Do you even remember who the chair is? Do you know who are the board members? So we are here, Kenyans are talking about this particular issue, and we have got a board from the Hassler Fund. They say nothing, they do nothing, they are so silent. Even if you met them, you would never know they are there. Yet we pay them for it. Either they believe in the bottom up uh, economic transformation agenda, or they don't. You cannot be a minister and everybody else, parliament is making noise about an issue, you are not saying anything. You are a PS in that department, you are not talking about it. So the president needs proper help as he moves forward to communicate his agenda and even his progress. I have looked at some documents, especially on how we are implementing uh, uh, prog uh, progress reports from uh, the Council of Economic Advisors from the president. Mm -hmm. You look at the scores we've done and you realize that the government has done so much. But even the ministers and the PSS from that department don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. So, number one, we got the diagnosis right. Number two, the people who are working on it must also tell people that we are doing something about it. That's why they say, Ganga Ganga Zam Ganga, who was Nampatia Mgonjo Matumaini. 
Imagine if you are out there, people are talking about this situation, and the people from those departments are not saying anything. What do you think about it? You feel doomed because okay. no one is speaking about it. But, but George, halfway, halfway, <coughs> halfway, just a moment. Mm. 